The next thing I'm going to talk about is something called type coercion. This is something that JavaScript does uh, automatically. And uh, there are similarities in languages like Java. There are similar things which happen, but just want to highlight that this is something that happens in JavaScript. So what is type coercion? Type coercion is where you have uh, variables declared with uh, you know, and assigned to a value, and you're operating on those variables. And there are certain points of time where the interpreter or the compiler will have to do some automatic type conversions for you in order to make that operation work, right? So let's say you're dealing with some values of different types, variables of different types, you're adding them or you're doing some operations with them. There's no way those operations can work unless there is some automatic type conversion that happens, right? So this is usually called type coercion. A standard example is concatenation with string values. Let's say you have a, something like this, 123 plus the string four. What do you think happens? This is again common behavior. You see this in other uh, programming languages as well. As you would expect, the value will be one, two, three, four string. What the interpreter does is it looks at the first value, which is a number, and it's added to the second value, which is a string. It obviously cannot work, right? You cannot add a number to a string. So at least one of those two values has to be converted to the other type so that they both belong to the same type. So what the JavaScript interpreter does is it takes the number and converts it to a string. So the number 123 becomes the string 123. And then it appends uh, 4 to it. So you get 1234, which is a string. This is something that behaves like you would expect it to. But remember that there is type coercion that happens. And JavaScript does a lot of type coercion, which is not what you would expect it to. And uh, I'll cover that soon. All right, now I'm going to talk about the equals operator, the double equals operator. So one thing that's common in a lot of programming languages is that the single equals is usually taken up for the assignment operation, right? You say A equals B, it's basically B, uh, uh, you know, uh, the value of B assigned to A. So the single equals is always taken for assignment. So when you want to compare two values, right? If, you know, it's an if structure, if A equals B, what you would typically do is you use the double equals because a single equals has a completely different meaning. This exists in almost all programming languages. So if you want to compare if A is equal to B, you say if in parentheses, A double equals B. So the double equals operator compares those two values and then returns a Boolean, whether it's a true or a false, depending on the values of those two. Now, in JavaScript, it does kind of the same thing, but it goes one level beyond what you would expect it to. So let me give you an example. All right, so I have, uh, I'm going to clear this out and um, clear this out as well. I'm going to say var a equals 10, var b equals 10, and then I'm going to do a if a double equals b and say console.log values are equal. All right, so I'm gonna right click and say reload and run and say the values are equal. No surprises here. Uh, I hope this if block is familiar. Like I said, this is similar to other C family of languages, so this should not come as a surprise to you. So this is double equals. So what's different in the case of JavaScript? The difference is, let's say instead of having a value of a number for B, I have a value which is a string containing the value 10. Okay, so now in this if block, I'm comparing a variable which has a number 10 and uh, I'm comparing it to a variable which holds the value of string 10, and I'm checking if they are equal. Now, what do you think happens over here? Ideally, it should not print the values are equal, right? Turns out JavaScript has different intentions in mind. So if I reload and run, it still shows values are equal. What on earth is going on here? So you remember I told you that uh, when JavaScript was created, it was meant to be easy for people to 
get into and use, right? So I told you that the interpreter is very forgiving. It makes assumptions. It tries to cover up what could potentially be mistakes. And uh, in an attempt to do that, what the interpreter also does is make a whole lot of mistakes on its own, right? So when the double equals was designed in JavaScript, right, when JavaScript was being created, they wanted to make it super friendly. They wanted to make it uh, accommodative and understanding. So what they decided was, let's say you have two values and you're trying to compare the two. If one of those values can automatically be type converted to the other, do the type conversion and then check and see if they are the same. Okay, you remember I was telling you about how you can do like things like uh, 10 plus 10 and this will result in a string 1010, right? So this 10 is being automatically converted to a string. So when the double equals operator were designed for JavaScript, they decided to do the exact same thing. So if when you're doing a double equals and they are of uh, the values are of two different types, the JavaScript interpreter tries to convert one of them to the other and then see if it matches. So what JavaScript is doing here is, it says, okay, this is a number 10, this is a string 10, they're obviously not equal, so probably the developer needs some help here. So it converts the number to a string and then sees if those two match. If they match, the if block gets executed. As you can see, this is all kinds of bad. You wouldn't want to do something like this. So when the language was rolled out and people started using the double equals, uh, people started getting frustrated. And uh, they said, okay, we got to change this, but now you cannot because that's the thing about languages. Once you roll something out, it's hard to change because when you change something, it's very likely that the people's code is going to break and it's not going to work anymore. You don't want that. So what, ja what the JavaScript language designers did was, well, the single equals is taken by the assignment. If you say A equals B, B goes to A. You can't use the single equals. Now, if the double equals in JavaScript is taken by this weird thing which does type conversion and does automatic things for you, they don't want to change that. So what they did was they introduced a new operator, which is the triple equals. I'm not kidding. This is actually true. So JavaScript has a triple equals operator, which does the comparison like you would expect it to. It does not do type conversion. If two variables, if two values that are being compared with the triple equals operator are of different types, it is going to re return false. Okay, so let me try this out. I'm gonna clear this out and uh, reload and run. It should not print the value to the console. And you see, it does not. Okay, so the triple equals is the right way of comparing values in JavaScript. Okay, so this takes the place of the double equals that you're already familiar with, but the double equals is there in JavaScript. It just doesn't do what you want it to. It kind of does in most of the cases, but when you have things like this, a number and a string, then it can lead to trouble. So it's better to be safe and always use a triple equal so that you know exactly what it does.